With regards to mothers now, I have noticed that all these mothers, the mother of Imam Bukhari, the mother of Imam Shafi'i, the mother of Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, the mother of Rabi'ah, were all single mothers. It's amazing. You know what single mother means. Not just living in a council flat and drunk and... Uh, no, no. Single mother means responsible mother. Being able to care about her children and produce good men. Okay. Let's begin with the mother of Imam Bukhari. And I'm not going to talk much about each character. Because I think I did this in other places when I talked about the life of Imam Bukhari and the four great Imams. So I'm not going to repeat myself here. And if anything, I'm going to zoom the camera now on the female player in the narrative. I'm not going to market Bukhari and Shafi. I've done this already and I'm not going to replicate that. Okay, what do we know about the mother of Imam Bukhari or Imam Shafi? Notice something. When we talk about the mother of Bukhari or Shafi'i or Ahmed bin Hanbal or Malik ibn An, you would realize or you would notice that every mother had a contribution to make in the character of her son. One mother might not have taught her children or her great son much of knowledge, but lots of morals. Another mother cared about knowledge. What I'm trying to say is that all of the mothers gave their sons a tool. And that tool later was developed by the son. But at least she gave him something. Okay, Imam Bukhari, what did his mother give him? Immediately, and to dramatize what she gave him, she gave him the ability to see. Imagine blind Imam Bukhari. Imagine a blind Imam. I know that he had a Xerox photographic memory. I know that. But still, imagine we have a blind Bukhari. Because he had a great memory, but all his notes were kept in writing. Imagine he was blind. Why do you have to imagine? He was blind. Imam Bukhari was blind. Do you know this? Well, no, he wasn't. Well, actually, he was blind during his childhood. And because of his mother's dua, he could see again. This is an immediate physical impact and contribution that the mother had on her child. Imam Bukhari was born an orphan and his mother never got married. Now, getting married after the husband passes away, nothing is wrong with that. And there were many, many, many men that passed away and their wives got married. Nothing is wrong with that. But in our case, most if not all of the mothers never remarried. So we have a mother that makes dua that her son sees again. And we have a mother that sacrifices her desires for the sake of her son. Number two. Because then imagine when the mother gets married and the husband says, look, you have Bukhari. He, I mean, he's not my son. You know, I want a new baby. So Bukhari shouldn't come and visit us all the time. You should rent him a room or I don't know where. And Bukhari is an orphan and he's blind and no one takes care of him. Would we have Imam Bukhari as we have him today? If we did not have a mother that committed her entire life for him, think about that. So these are two important things, I think. Okay, let me dramatize the dua of the mother of Imam Bukhari. Why did Allah accept the mother's dua? Because the mother was a woman of karama. A woman of karama. And karama means that she is so close to Allah, so connect. She's connecting to Allah so much so that whenever she asks for something, Allah gives it to her. So imagine these scenarios between a mother and between a blind child. Various scenarios. Imagine a mother that is not religious, a mother that is not a good worshipper, a mother that is not of a karamat. Whatever dua she will make, Allah will never answer. And Bukhari will remain blind. Okay, imagine a mother 
with karamat. Imagine a mother that is religious, but a mother that never thought about making dua for her son. Ne- never occurred to her mind. Then we have a good mother, but yet a blind imam. Okay, imagine a mother that is of karamat, uh, that thought about dua, but, uh, and Bukhari can see, alhamdulillah, but after he could see, that was it. That was the entire relationship between him and her. So what are we talking about? I'm trying to dramatize her role. We are talking about a good mother. We are talking about a mother that was close to Allah. We are talking about a mother that made dua. We are talking about a mother that after Allah opened his eyes, she supported him financially, physically, and emotionally until he became the scholar that we know today. That is the mother of Imam Bukhari. Four contributions and impacts that she had on her son. It's not enough to say he had a good mother. We all have good mothers. But good in terms of what? Feeding me chicken and meat and... But for a mother to make dua every night and cry for me and say, Oh Allah, make him see again. This is a unique mother. 